Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I'm a premier field engineer specializing in system center technologies. Today's discussion is part 22 and final presentation of a series talking about operating system deployment and configuration manager 2012. Today's topic specifically focusing on Windows 10 imaging, talking about some scenarios, some options, rather a uh, short session today just to wrap this up and uh, put a bow around the series and, and talk about uh, Windows 10. So we'll have a few stops here in terms of uh, talking about imaging options. Uh, just a brief mention about the Windows 10 ADK. Uh, just share a few additional details and we'll be done. So the bulk of our time we'll spend talking about imaging options. So in terms of uh, what choices we can make for doing Windows 10 imaging, and remember the whole focus of today's session will be to talk about uh, just Windows 10, there are uh, requirements certainly in terms of supported platform, supported versions of a configuration manager in order to deploy Windows uh, 10. The base would be configuration manager 2012 service pack 2 uh, or configuration manager 2012 R2 service pack 1. The, that version of config manager fully supports uh, deploying Windows 10. Now there are some scenarios around deploying Windows 10, specifically upgrade, which we'll talk about in a minute that the inbuilt uh, task sequence steps don't really accommodate uh, as steps. They certainly will in terms of uh, using run command line options and so on. And so uh, whenever we get there, I'll show you that. Right, uh, in Configuration Manager V Next, which you'll also see uh, in a bit, uh, at least technical preview three of it, we do add some specific steps into the task sequence option list to accommodate uh, the upgrade scenario, right? So, so what are the the scenarios for Windows 10 imaging? Well, there's three. You can see them on the screen. The first is is wipe and load. So, wipe and load is the tr traditional imaging scenario that we've been talking about throughout this entire series, where regardless of the the name of the imaging kind of kind of scenario, it really is always a wipe and load of the disk, brand new operating system, right? There is a scenario. Uh, that is referred to in MDT and in Config Manager called an upgrade scenario. Uh, that is a wipe and load, just like the replace, just like the uh, uh, just like the rebuild and, and bare metal and all of those things, right? They they all ultimately are bare metal. So wipe and load certainly still supported. It works exactly the way uh, that it always has. Very traditional mechanism for imaging in Config Manager. Uh, complete disk format and so on and on we go, right? You'll see in just a minute it looks exactly like what we've been doing in the imaging task sequences so far. But uh, it's not the only option. There's the upgrade too, right? There are places where wipe and load still strictly required, right? Uh, so examples would be if you're changing disk partitioning, got to do wipe and load. If you're reloading a machine going from BIOS to UEFI, got to go wipe and load. Uh, x86 to x64, wipe and load. If you're changing a base OS language, wipe and load is your only option. May have missed uh, some other ones, but you get the idea, right? If you're not in one of those scenarios, then upgrade could very well work for you. And it's a, a, a scenario that, uh, that really would encourage you to look at. Before we get there, though, I do want to show you what wipe and load looks like. And this is uh, really no different at all, like I mentioned, than what we have seen uh, all the way through this, right? So let me start with my Configuration Ma Manager 2012 environment here. Go down to Task Sequences. <clears throat> and if I go down, I see that I have a Windows 10 uh, wipe and load scenario. This is just your standard task sequence. I can get it to go to edit here shortly. There we go. Oops. Went to properties by mistake. Come on. All right. Being a little bit sluggish, but we should have it up here in a second. And this is the very traditional task sequence. Apply operating system is what actually lays down Windows 10. Uh, I'm using Windows 10 imported as an operating system image, and it works just like you normally would expect that it does. All right. All right. So if I go to Configuration Manager 
uh, vnext, again, this is technical preview three. Uh, then you have the wipe and load uh, task sequence here as well. Again, very familiar territory for what we've been talking about. Uh, it's exactly the same as what you just saw. Right? So here, apply operating system, and we're good to go. So very familiar. All right, so what about an upgrade scenario, All right? So upgrade is truly an upgrade. It's a new scenario that's been introduced in Windows 10 and in Config Manager and MDT. Uh, full support is given for the upgrade scenario. Again, same platforms as talked about. So why would we do an upgrade scenario? Well, one reason, several reasons actually, is faster. Uh, if we're truly upgrading just the operating system of, of the machine, we don't have to worry about things like application reinstall or preserving user data. It's going to stay in place. Or uh, maybe preserving um, uh, application settings or specific file locations or whatever it is, right? That's all going to carry forward because all you're doing is lifting forward the operating system, nothing else. So one of the, uh, one of the challenges uh, historically with upgrading is that it could get you into trouble. Uh, really, there's no support for it uh, strictly in, in Configuration Manager, but if you did upgrade an OS, just even standalone, you could get into trouble if that OS upgrade failed. Significant work has been put into Windows 10 to ensure that if there is an error encountered during the upgrade process, that we can roll back successfully and cleanly to the previous operating system. In fact, in some testing that I did, certainly couldn't cover every potential scenario, but I really did try to break the upgrade process so that it would be unrecoverable in some pretty harsh ways, and it recovered itself every time. So, uh, seems to be pretty bulletproof. We've, as of this recording, got millions of systems that have already upgraded worldwide with the free Windows 10 option out there. The only choice is to upgrade. And so uh, lots of consumers have already done so. So it's definitely something worth, uh, worth taking a look at if, uh, if, if there's a need. So certainly we know the scenarios for wipe and load. Upgrade, uh, definitely one uh, to see. Right? So let me show you what the upgrade scenario looks like in Configuration Manager 2012 first. And then we will look back at vNext, uh, Technical Preview 3 anyway. So this is a task sequence that the product group has published. It's an example of doing an upgrade. There are no, even though these steps are named and look like uh, inbuilt steps, these are largely run command line steps. So first we're going to check readiness. That's certainly a step that's built in. Do some pre-setup. That's a PowerShell script that uh, was provided with the example. And you can download this off of a blog, uh, the product team blog for, uh, for Windows 10 deployment. Here's just a run command line to stage the deployment. We're going to upgrade uh, call setup.exe with a bunch of command line switches. If there's a failure, we have a PowerShell script to recover from that. Finally, do a restart, restart, install software updates, clean up, whatever. This is very, very basic. The most basic you can have to do an upgrade of Windows to Windows 10, right? And fully supported. Works beautifully. Uh, it does require some command line options and such that, uh, that you can see here. If we look at vNext, then we also have an upgrade task sequence. And what we have here is just an illustration of the inbuilt support that comes for handling upgrades. So there is actually a step now added under images. And we have uh, upgrade operating system right, right there. And so if we look at it, we have a few options here. Uh, in this case, I added Windows 10 as an upgrade package. So that's where it's coming from. And we can choose optionally these steps if we want to to augment and so on besides that it's normal processing right much shorter task sequence um, because we don't have to deal with drivers and you know different formatting and partitioning steps and so on so pretty streamlined and uh, this really should largely be it because in an upgrade scenario there's no applications to install no user settings to restore and so on right all right so that's uh, two so there is actually a third upgrade scenario uh, as well. And I'm sorry, a third imaging type scenario as well. And it's called Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer, acronym WICKED, right? So what actually is 
Windows Imaging and Configuration Designer. Well, it's a, it's a component of the Windows 10 ADK. The, the, the goal of this is to provide an environment where if a user has a device with Windows 10 on it, whether it's a device that uh, they got bring your own device from a Best Buy or uh, whatever store that they purchased the device from, it's stock, OEM loaded, whatever, and you want to transform that operating system to adhere to corporate standards, that's really the goal of Windows Image and Configuration Designer. Right? It's, it's a bit limited in some ways in the release I'll show you today. It is RTM, um, but it, it does some interesting things, uh, and you'll get a flavor for what the direction for this thing is. Right? In order to install uh, Wicked, you definitely need to install certain components of the Windows 10 ADK. You'll need the deployment tools, Windows PE and user state migration tools. Uh, for Windows 10 machines, you can just simply install the ADK. If you're installing to Windows 8.1, then there will be a registry key that needs to be added, but it has to be one of those two operating systems in order to run uh, Windows Image uh, and Configuration Designer. So the other thing that's interesting that, that this enables is, in addition to live system transformation, addition mobility. So if, if perhaps you picked up a device that's running Windows 10 Professional and the corporate standard is Windows 10 Enterprise, it's just a selection in uh, the designer wizard and uh, we can change that addition on the fly whenever you apply the, the provisioning package. All right, there's some good references down here to read up on using uh, Wicked and uh, be able to kind of see some step-by-steps of walking through what I'm going to show you here, right? So let me walk through this and show you what it looks like. So I have Windows uh, Designer located on my de on my machine here. There it is. And I'm going to launch it. All right, so pull it into view. Uh, here I'm going to do a new provisioning package. Uh, simply call this uh, test PP. I'm going to move back and make sure that I'm focused on the desktop where that folder exists. This does need to be an empty folder, by the way. All right, and uh, it's not empty, so that's from a previous build. I'll have to go uh, clean it out real fast. No problem there. So here, that's what you'll see regenerated in a minute, so that's gone. Now uh, I'm good to go. I'll have to probably move around in here, delete that or whatever, that's good. Next. So I'm going to do common to all Windows desktop editions, next. And I don't have an existing provisioning package, so we're going to come up and load the options that I can then choose from. So you notice I have deployment assets and I also have runtime settings. So uh, you can go through, you can pick and choose. Notice here's the one for edition upgrade. All you need to do is specify either a license or product key. I'm just simply going to add a user account. Easy enough to do. Uh, call this test user. Add it in. You notice on the left hand side that there's certain information that's required. Go ahead and type in the password. And I will add the user to the administrators group just for fun. All right, that's it. That's all the configuration I'm going to do. I'm now going to export the provisioning package and flag that the owner of this is IT administration. And I'm not going to encrypt, I'm just going to let it roll forward and export as a build. So all done here. So now I'm going to go to the build folder that I just created. It's going to be populated again, just like you saw that it was. All I need is this file. So I'm going to copy it and then pull in a Windows 10 machine that I have for testing and paste this out. Oops, yeah, let me reconnect to it. I didn't connect with the advanced connection options, which allows me to copy and paste. All right, much better. Good enough, so I have that here and I'm going to launch my uh, local computer management. And look at the current users that are on this machine. Okay, 
good enough. So this will add my one user. I'll just simply launch it, say yes, and it is trusted, add it. So we're going to run through, simple as that, do F5, and now we have our test user just as was configured. All right, so I'll go ahead and delete. Actually, I'll look at properties, show you. Uh, it is a member of administrators like I configured. So good enough. And I don't need this account, so I will actually just get rid of it. Okay. All right, so Windows Image and Configuration Designer, if you haven't uh, had a look at that, definitely take a look. It's, it's an interesting tool and uh, be fun to watch and see how it takes shape uh, even more potentially over time. All right, good enough. So let's turn our attention to uh, the Windows 10 ADK, right? And we'll spend just a little bit of time here. So the first point about the Windows 10 ADK is that it is absolutely not required in order to image Windows 10 devices, right? Uh, it seems like it should be because every time we've done an upgrade, if uh, you wanted to image that level of system, you had to upgrade to that version of the ADK. This is different. It, it's not required, right? So why continue with the Windows 8.1 ADK versus moving to Windows 10? Well, the first answer is if you're rebuilding a config manager site, Windows 8.1 ADK will be the prerequisite of config manager uh, that you'll have to supply. So if you want to use Windows 10 ADK, you'll still have to have the Windows 8.1 ADK in place in order to pass the prerequisite wizard and install Configuration Manager. Once that's done, you can deinstall the Windows 8.1 ADK and move to Windows 10 ADK without problem. All right? So, um, but you know, really, it, it's it's really a question of of specific needs uh, whether you move to Windows 10 ADK. You know, for example, it is absolutely fully supported to deploy Windows 10 with the Windows 8.1 ADK. Not a problem. That's what you saw on at least my Config Manager 2012 system where I showed you that earlier, right? So if we fully support deploying Windows 10 with the 8.1 ADK, why move to the Windows 10 ADK? Well, uh, it provides the latest Windows 10 deployment tools. Uh, it provides the latest USMT, which if you're doing user state on Windows 10, you probably uh, would benefit from having that latest code base. Know that if you do move to Windows 10, the new USMT package is not created for you. You will have to do that manually and point to the source files in the Windows 10 ADK. Not a big deal, but uh, but at least worth knowing, right? All right, and then finally, a few additional details as we close this thing out. I told you it would be short, right? Wrapping up the series. Uh, just a few things that I've come across as Windows 10 imaging has taken place. Uh, certainly not an exhaustive list and uh, other issues uh, might have uh, been something that crossed your radar, but these uh, I've seen a couple of times. So first of all, uh, sysprep. So it's a very common process as you're, as you're capturing an image uh, for storage and, and to use as your base image to have to sysprep. It's, it's a required part of the process. Problem is you cannot sysprep an upgraded OS. So if you have a system that started out at Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1 and you upgraded it to Windows 10 and you want to recapture that as a new image unsupported. Sysprep will detect that the OS has been upgraded and block running on that machine. If you uh, are going to create a new image you do need to do a brand new install of Windows 10. Right? And then Windows, in, uh, Windows 10 installation. Uh, this isn't I guess strictly imaging but it, it is tied along with it. So license requirements, not a licensing guru, definitely uh, please check the license requirements uh, out there whenever this video is consumed. But know that the free Windows 10, at least uh, at the time of this video, the free Windows 10 licensing requirements absolutely requires upgrading, right? Not wipe and load. So the, the free Windows 10 upgrade uh, requires, I'm sorry, the, the free Windows 10 license that uh, Microsoft provides requires that you upgrade from your existing OS to Windows 10. Wipe and load is not the same. Seems like a niggly point, but uh, a point to understand, right? Whatever path you're on to go to Windows 10, just make sure you're covered from a license perspective uh, before, you, before you choose a final deployment option. So that's really it. Uh, that's Windows 10 in about 20 minutes, and it's not a challenging 
uh, path for upgrade. It does offer a few new options, so definitely take a look. We'll close out the series now, and we'll see you next time.